Hello everyone, your Dr. Zia Tahir here. This video tutorial is cross analysis in a Vacus CAE. So the cross is a balcony truss here shown in the figure and it is made of Douglas fair wood with the modulus of elasticity 1.9 to enter per 6 pound per square inch. Pisons ratio is 0.3 and cross sectional area of each member is 8 inch squared. So determine deflection of each joint. So like at the nodes, then axial forces and stress for each member and reaction at each support under loading condition shown in the figure. So this truss is example 3.2 of chapter 3 trusses from the book finite element theory and application with answers by Said Ramani fourth edition and that is the problem here is 3.2 that is example 3.2 from chapter 3 trusses from the book finite element theory and application with answers so whatever will be the results from abacus so those results will be compared with the results in this book. Truss analysis in Abacus that has three steps main the modeling, analysis, and then results. So, in the modeling, so these are the steps which I'll follow for the modeling, then in analysis, and then these five steps for results. So, I'll go through each step one by one. In a backus and details of these I'll explain for each step. So before start, remember that in a backus there is no set units. You have to use your own units. So units can be Newton meter Pascal or pound inch and PSI. So you need to first find your own units and they should be all units should be aligned like for dimension if it is meter force is newton and then for stresses or pressure it must be pascal and similarly inch pound and pound per square inch so because i have units as feet pound per square inch and area in inch squared so I'll prefer to use inch pound and PSI and I'll convert that feet into inches. So this second set I am going to use. So that is Abacus CAE 2020. So I'm going to use Abacus CAE 2020. So when you're going to start Abacus, so you need to set work directories. So this work directory you need to set where you want to save all files and then you need to save model so it's very simple go to file set work directory and i'm going to set that work directory here and then file save the model and i am going to save it as 2d balcony truss And then I need to save this model as well. And remember that in this model, you can't use spaces. So I'm renaming it as. So you can't use uh, spaces or full stops or dashes here. Rather, you can use underscore. So I am going to use Balcony Trust 2D as the name of this model. Okay, so there was space there. So that's why. There was error, so now that is two balcony truss 2D. So now this environment is ready. So you can change that uh, viewport color. You can go here view and then graphic options. Here there's a gradient bottom to top, like here is a gray to black. So you can change it to solid of any color, let's say white color. You can use or otherwise default is like that one okay so solid and any solid color you can use so 
in the modeling first step is to create parts so it will be 2d deformable wire and then create lines connected so here you have part or you have part here so click on the part so i can name it as truss to 2d deformable wire and approximate size should be the double of your whatever you are going to draw so the maximum length of the model is 6 feet which is 72 inches so 72 times by 2 which is approximately 150 so approximate size i am using here 150 and that one so that is the region and then you'll have all that there so now uh, these are the connected lines which you need to use for this truss and once again here like each member is three feet so it means 36 inches so i'm going to start from the origin here and i'll go 36 and you can see there so here you can see the coordinates are changing so i can here pick the end point of the line so you can add here 36 comma zero and that is the first line there and from here you can go up and the coordinates for that will be 36 comma 36 and that you have i can come back to 0 and 36 then i'll come back here and the coordinates here must be uh, 72 and 36 72 comma 36 there you are and then so now that is cancel procedure so with auto foot view so that is the part here so you can check the dimensions by here auto dimension so you can check these dimensions so select here auto dimension select all and done so here you can see that is 36 that is 36 and diagonal is 50.61 or otherwise you can give dimensions you can change dimensions so that is 36 so you can change any dimension you want that is 36 so that is part so it's done so now that part has been created next part is to create material and is a mechanical elastic and need to add modulus of elasticity and Python's ratio. So modulus of elasticity is 1.9 into 10 to raise power 6 and Python's ratio is 0.3. So here you'll have in the module, uh, in the property module or here you can double click on the material. So the material is wood and here mechanical elasticity, elastic and Young's modulus is 1.9 e raise power 6 psi and then Python's ratio is 0.3. Okay, so now you can see that material wood with elastic properties, modulus of elasticity and Python's ratio has been created. Next step is create section and in the category, it's a beam and type is truss and need to add cross-sectional area and then assign section. So cross-sectional area is zero. Cross-sectional area is eight square inch. So here you have to create section or otherwise you have here section so section you can leave that so it is beam truss so you can name it or like i am going to name it as truss beam truss continue and then it's wood okay so need to add sorry i forgot to add here so cross sectional area is eight so material is wood and cross sectional area is eight so remember here cross sectional area value of cross sectional area is only required because uh, for finite element analysis of trusses when you need to write surface matrix so that only include area and it doesn't include cross section okay so that's why just the value of area is required and then about uh, this abacus Zoom a random cross section, usually it is circular. 
the next step is mesh and the first mesh seed by seed edge by number one then mesh part and assign element type it is p2d2 so here you have mesh or otherwise in the part cross here you have mesh and the first one is seed part so approximate global size so i'm not using it rather than i am going to use seed edges so for all edges done and then it gave me option by number and i just use one element each member as one element that is what used in finite element analysis of crosses or bar element so apply so you can see that here the uh, elements okay and then here you can go for mesh mesh is done and then here the default i am using here and then here is assign element type so select all that done and element size here standard linear and then cross so standard linear and it is t2d2 so now that is done so mesh is done next step is in assembly create instance it's very much straightforward you can go in the module here assembly or otherwise here double click on instance and it's a part cross okay so now you can see that here in the assembly under the instance you'll have cross or okay so that assembly part is done next step is step create step and it is journal static and then journal so here you can go in the step and create step or otherwise you'll have here double click on the step so step you can name it as static load in procedure type journal and then is a static journal continue and then i'm leaving that all as default so now the static load is being step as static load is being applied the next step using the step module create field output stresses displacement forces and reactions so it is not in fact required so you can go here step and that is create field output or otherwise you have here field output request double click on it and then there are so many long options stresses strain displacement rotation forces so we don't need strains we don't need contact so this is just an optional uh, op this is an option so you can uh, select that one because if you're not going to uncheck strains and contact so uh, the computation time for that simple type of model that will not affect next step in the load module need to create load and we have already used step as static load so that one we will use and you'll use concentrated force and two loads 500 pound each are acting vertically downward at these two number four and number five positions so here you can go load and then you can create load here or you can double click load and load and step is static load i am going to use it load one mechanical concentrated force continue and then here done and this minus 500 minus 500 so uh, while you are going to apply load cf1 one mean x direction two mean y direction so that is minus 500 so here you can see load is applied and similarly i am going to apply load two and there you are done and then again minus 500 so both loads are being applied here load 1 500 load 2 and you can change that by double click on that so 500 by double clicking on that again 500 next step in the load module need to create a boundary condition and then displacement rotation need to select and step must be as initial 
so both are simple sports at one and three so for simple sport so there are two reaction at each sport so because there are two reactions it means that two displacement in horizontal direction and vertical direction they are restricted so here you can go to boundary condition and here step is initial mechanical displacement rotation continue that is it uh, first one done and then u1 and u2 you need to select because reactions are only in horizontal and vertical direction and similarly by so that is the one created so similarly double click it on the condition step initial continue and then select it and then u1 and u2 so now these two boundary conditions they are applied by double click that, that you can check that which displacement you have set as zero the next step is in the job you need to create job then data check and submit so you can go to the module and job create job there or double click on the job and create job so that is a model balcony trust 2d so i am going to use the same name here continue okay and then you can see here so you can perform data check so so in the data check the following have some element without any section and this assigned section i skipped to uh, show you that if you skipped any section uh, any part or any step so data check will help you that which step is missing okay so you say okay to continue with job submission so i am going to set no i'll go back in property module and then here is assign section or otherwise you can go here section assignment or you can double click on that so now here it says select the region to assign section and then here so done okay so this data check command is very important why is that uh, this is a simple model and what this simple model when you're going to submit job so probably it will take less than a minute or two minutes to complete that job but if you are going to use a complex model so probably it will give you error it, due to the model after some time so data check is important and here you can see that in the section trust is there okay so like if you will follow all those steps completely so then you will uh, you will not get any error in data check so now the data check completed it means without error then i'm going to submit it so job is completed so it's mean that analysis is done and all next is post processing or visualization of the data so the next step is visualization of results using that field output dialog and then you need to check displacement stresses and then reaction forces so here you right click to get results and these are the results or otherwise you can go file open and then here you can open odb okay and that it is in the output database that you have OTV. so now that is its deformed state so then this is undeformed shape and that is with the contour plots so these are the stresses and we are looking for deflection then axial force stresses and reaction so deflection stresses and reactions they can be compute, uh, seen directly, but that axial force need to calculate outside of a Bacchus environment. So here you can see that S stresses and that is S11. So these are the stresses. Here you can plot that both deformed and undeformed shape. There you have displacements and that is a magnitude. There is U1 u2 displacement and then 
here are the reaction forces so rf1 in and then rf2 and here by clicking on that by clicking here the common option so you can label node labels okay and then you can show element label apply so element labels they are not very much clear so i can go to to view and then graphic option so i'll change it to default apply so that is being now you can see that node numbers and so these are the nodes so node numbers and element numbers are being shown there so you can then so that is a contour for all three required so the next step for visualization of u displacement prob node pr prob nodes then components all display group all and then you can write to a file and then you can generate a data file for it so here you will have u displacements and here you have prob so prob values and uh, because that displacements are required at nodes and then here a selector display group components all all mean u1 and u2 and then display group all nodes so here you have so there you have now you can see all values are shown on all values so you can see for nodes so they are being displayed and then you can go right to file and then you can simply write a uh, so this as report okay or you can name it any of your choice okay so in your work directory you have that report dot rpt and that report contain you have requested u1 and u2 so these are the u1 and u2 values for each node so next step is stresses using that prob value prob element because stresses in the elements is required component s11 for the stresses s11 and then you can write a file on it so here you can go to s and then s11 and then here prob elements and then here all so position you can use either integration point or centroid so by checking all you can check the values for each element that how much are the stresses and then you can write to a file okay and then it is a report append to the file so it will go at the end of that and maximum significant figures you can see here okay next step is in the visualization reaction force prop values and then all the reaction so here will you go uh, you'll go here reaction forces it says magnitude and then i'll go to the prob and here so reactions on the nodes all and then here all so then these are the forces at each you can display so 1500 in x direction zero in y so 1500 in x minus thousand in y and then so these are the reaction forces because reactions are only at these points okay and then you can write to the file again. now the final is uh, to calculate member forces first need to create report from the field output right create report from field output by defining variable as one and then first need to create a report so if you want to see the cross section of that you can go to the model then here odb display options and in the general you can go render beam profile and scale factor one so apply so that is the 
whatever is the value for that so the scale factor with the scale factor one so then we will see here that what is the cross section and the cross section uh, which a backus assumes that is circular cross section so then here you have report report and report field output and in the field output you have here stress component that is s11 and in the setup you can name it as s11 s11 okay and then you can sort by element label and then in ascending order number of uh, significant figures so they are six and then you can see here engineering or scientific apply okay so now report has been created so in the work directory as you can see s11 dot report rpt is being created so now these are element labels one two three four five six so i am just going to copy that and paste in excel so i'm going to paste that in excel and now that is the stress but it is being pasted as text so i select that one and then go to data text to columns okay so delimit with space i think that next and finish so now next now you go export that to excel and then calculate member forces by multiplying it with the cross-sectional area so then equal stress times by the cross-sectional area which is eight so these are member forces okay so the member one two three four five six as shown there like i'll go to view odb display option and apply and then here are labels so element labels they are blue so i'm going to change them to black so they will be visible now so like one two three four five six and the reaction forces in all these members they are in newton so that is all of truss analysis in a back to cae so this is a comprehensive video for like uh, students which start their analysis on trust so that's why i have explained every bit in this one so once again in once again so whatever you will get any result so you need to compare it with once you have done with the hand calculation and all these results i have compared with in this problem like as in in this example here so these are displacements okay or the flexion so i have compared with there those values and then here are axial forces and stresses so i have compared axial forces and stresses with these values like as axial forces are minus 1500 14 one four five two values are 500 one is minus 500 and one is minus 707 so here you can see so the values are like minus 1500 then 14.41 14 14.2 14 then two values are 500 one is minus 500 one is 707 but it's like element uh, for the book they have used a different element but the location of elements is important okay so the results are verified and then these are like you need to set units then the summary of all that and set work directory save model create part material then create section then mesh, then create instance, create step. Sometimes you need to create field output if it is not a general case. 
but in this case you don't need to then create load create boundary condition then create job and data check is important and then to submit and then in the result visualization all those results so i hope you find this detailed video helpful so thank you very much for watching so you can subscribe my channel for more videos on finite element analysis in abacus or ansys